So if they can uh, unmute themselves and um, show it to me. Hello, ma'am. Yes. Are you sure? Uh, ma'am, uh, my idea was uh, uh, a gradual change in the curriculum and pedagogy. So uh, initially, if we uh, analyze, if we analyze the situation uh, in the present uh, assessment system, I am focusing on my own uh, education board, uh, CBSE. So in the present, uh, in the present uh, assessment system, what is being done is 80% weightage is given to the year end paper pen test and uh, um, other modes uh, and 5% weightage is for multiple assessment, 5% weightage is for periodic tests, 5% uh, weightage is for subject enrichment activities and uh, the, uh, the rest 5% uh, is for portfolio. So basically uh, the problem is multiple assessment is included but it has very less weightage. So uh, basically uh, in order to bring this change in curriculum, what, uh, what I feel is Gradually, we should uh, reduce the weightage of the paper pen test, uh, the 80 marks test. Uh, it is uh, given 80. Per, uh, it is given 80 percent weightage. So gradually, we should reduce the uh, weightage of that paper pen test, and we yeah. should increase the weightage of multiple assessment and portfolio. And, yeah, yeah, uh, that's a that's a good thing. But I, what, what did you draw? What is your own symbol? Did you draw, draw that? So I want to hear about that. Yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, my solution is it, uh, uh, it can also be implemented in ways. Uh, uh, somebody can somebody mute GM? Excuse me, ma'am, I was muted. I know. Yeah, yeah. Now, now you can speak, but but there there is somebody else who is also speaking on the call. Yeah, please go on. Yes. Uh, uh, my idea was that uh, like it can uh, implementation will be in stages, and it can start from this year itself. In this session, uh, the weightage of paper pen test is, uh, as I told you, eighty percent. So uh, its weightage be reduced to sixty five percent. So uh, uh, we have uh, fifteen percent in hand. From those, uh, five percent more weightage is to be given to the portfolio, and ten percent more weightage is uh, to be given to multiple assessment. And in this way, by re uh, reducing the uh, weightage of uh, paper pen test by uh, yeah. you know ten to fifteen percent every year, we yeah, will yeah. gradually. Yeah. Yeah. May I may I just stop you here because I have asked you to draw about like your personality symbol about that. Maybe you are you are not getting what I have asked for. Uh, but I got your point. You are talking about assessment, so that is that is a different way. Maybe this is not uh, uh, the uh, thing. Uh, so no problem. I will I will request you, if possible, to uh, like unmute yourself and also show your uh, drawing to me, uh, so that you have to also uh, turn on your camera so that I can see what you have drawn, if possible. Yes, great. <laughs> or you can also take a picture and send it to me here. That is also possible. Yeah, okay. Thank you, uh, Vishwanath. Um, or I wish. Yeah. Yeah, next person, please. We have to do it quickly because we don't have much time. So uh, just, just say one sentence about what you have drawn and what it represents. Hello. Four people are typing. OK, great. Always fly high. Mm -hmm. Somebody Lise has drawn the butterfly. Manava from sad to happy. <laughs> Vaishnavi always fly high. Very good. Jovi uh, stars twinkle in the eyes. OK, great. Nice. 
and uh, yeah at least you can unmute yourself and talk about what you have drawn quickly one one sentence yes kind and smiling face okay i try to smile for the most part of my life hence the smiley emoji manava constantly switching between happy and worried okay <laughs> that's how we all are i guess siddhi is typing okay great so i i will give you all to type your answers uh, maybe we can get 2 minutes by the time others are typing i'll just talk like what we have uh, uh, to discuss today so i am um, i'm quite sure that you uh, most of you are students and some of you are also teachers so first i would like to welcome you all for this session today i i know that you have been uh, through uh, some earlier sessions uh, so i really uh, i really thank you for joining me today for this session um maybe we will try to uh, brainstorm together we will try to discuss few things together so it's not that i am only talking and you are just listening to me but we will have some uh, activities together ma'am uh, suresh shadow pdf now sorry suresh shadow pdf now yeah 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 you can share it now yeah okay. if you have got it yes okay so siddhi has written here that i have many ideas in my head which i try to vocalize through words so i drew a book with flowering words wow i would love to see that can you take a picture and send it to me here so that uh, it will be nice and everybody else can also see uh, those who couldn't do this exercise uh, at this moment i advise them to do it later because it it just helps you to understand Uh, your personality in a better way in a different way uh, so it's like representing yourself in a different way uh, so um, so today we are just going to uh, discuss about this uh, creative pedagogy so what what does uh, mean by creative pedagogy so uh, basically it's like we are uh, talking about different methods to deliver the education or instructions deliver the curriculum so one of the important method which i work for is creative pedagogy and we as we all know the 21st century skills involve communication collaboration critical thinking and creativity so once you you uh, adapt this creative pedagogy then all these other three skills follow that pedagogy so this is uh, that's why we are discussing it today can you go to next slide please so uh, council for creative education is on wikipedia also as advocates of creative education so you can read that we are a global organization originating from tampere so you can see that i have a sunlight in my background i i know that in india it's already dark but we still have sun here because uh, Uh, it's summer here and in summer actually practically we don't have nights so these uh, whatever night we have uh, the night is called as white night so that's why uh, i am uh, sitting here in a uh, very good sunshine so greetings to all from tampere finland and uh, here we work re related to creative uh, pedagogy with the schools uh, early childhood uh, education centers and as well with the university uh, we have the initiative called creative 100 where we collect all kinds of innovations in education uh, where uh, that either the teachers or the students or group of students they have worked together to find uh, some something some new methodology in uh, uh, creative teaching or learning yeah next slide please so today we have agenda that we will talk little bit about what is creativity what is the meaning and description uh, then there are some misconceptions about creativity what's the need for creativity uh, if time permits we talk about the creativity identity interaction model and applying creativity in classrooms so some basic ideas about creativity and creative pedagogy yeah next please 
So we have already done this activity because uh, because of some technical glitches at my end. But uh, through this activity, the motto is that to you know understand that how we think normally and uh, what is our perception about ourselves. So just to uh, you know going a little bit deeper uh, in inside uh, this activity uh, was there. Um, next. Next slide. Yeah, great. So as you can see here, uh, the brain is in front of you and the right brain and left brain, uh, as we all know, the uh, it is like roughly divided like that, right and left. And though we know that actually the uh, the brain functions, you know, as as whole, but still there are centers in these two areas of dif for different things. So as you can see here on the left, uh, side brain. We have the centers for data, words, details, numbers, and on the right side of the brain, we have the centers for ideas, a big picture, uh, imagination, emotions. So uh, why uh, uh, when we are thinking about the school curriculum, we can easily understand that the school curriculum is mainly related to the left brain. OK? Because most of the times we are using the data, we are writing something, reading something, we are keen on the details and uh, then some calculations. So we are mostly uh, our, all the school curriculum is mostly based on the life uh, left side centers. But then we miss on the right things, which is there is about creativity. Can we go to the next slide? So what is the concept of this whole brain creativity? It's, it's a, a kind of a new concept. Uh, and as you can see that there are four types of things given about four types of intelligence. So the goals driven intelligence is that analytical intelligence. Then the results driven is the operational intelligence. The vision driven is the creative intelligence and people driven for relational intelligence. So when we say that we want to use the creativity, we need to have all these four types of intelligence together. In the next slide, we will see that what are the details for this. Uh, so analytical intelligence includes how you frame a problem. And it's also uh, includes how you evaluate an idea, including critical thinking. So I was telling you that when we follow the creative pedagogy, it also includes the critical thinking. So which you can see now here through the analytical intelligence. Then the artistic intelligence, it includes using your imagination, visual thinking and how you envision possibilities. So it's like you have to think not only about today, but you have to think about the future. And you have to imagine certain things because that is the uh, most important quality of an artist and that is imagination. Uh, then the relational intelligence is about the people, like how you make the relationships and how you uh, how your idea connects or impacts others within a system. So uh, is it influential enough so that others are convinced? And how uh, also you collaborate and cooperate with others. So the another C in the 21st century skills, that is the collaboration is also connected through this intelligence. And then the operational intelligence. So it includes the planning and organization. So how you turn an idea into action. So I think when we are doing it into this next edit-thon, what we are trying to do is that we are trying to convert the idea into action. And that is what is missing in our current education system. That first thing is we don't let our kids think independently. Second thing is if they think independently, we don't show them the ways of how to convert their thinking into action or their ideas into action. So we need to boost all these types of intelligence together in our education system. Maybe the analytical intelligence is little bit there, but we are missing out on all the other types of intelligence. So when we talk about our education system, then we need to consider all these types of intelligences. Next slide, please. 
yeah so uh, how it is this creativity and brain is related so to as you can read from the slide it's it is like to stimulate your creative brain you need to work with hands now the secret is that the creativity centers uh, in your brain can be stimulated when you do some things using your hands especially the centers are in the fingertips so when we say that creativity is actually at fingertips what we have so that what does that mean is that you need to do uh, things with your hands like for example uh, sewing knitting gardening uh, cooking uh, and especially if we are talking about the small kids or the children then and even for us we can also do finger painting for example so any kind of activity where you use your fingertips or woodwork carpentry or sculpturing there are so many things that we can do even like in india we make rangolis so this rangolis if you can make with also you, the where you need to use your this kind of pinch so uh, this is uh, advisable if you if you see that most of the times uh, women in our household they are doing this skilled work or this uh, uh, you can say fine motor skills uh, they are having it more than the boys so they are more creative because they are stimulating their centers for creativity so that's why it is advisable that we use uh, this method when we are promoting the creative pedagogy okay and uh, as we all know the learning by doing approach is is uh, is like a pivotal a part of creative pedagogy so when we say that we want to encourage our kids to think creatively when we want our teachers to be creative then the basic thing which is required is the learning by doing approach okay next slide please so how uh, uh, we can do this with the uh, uh, like we we were already discussing about the creativity and brain and i told you where are the centers so but there are some important neurotransmitters actually which help our brain to be uh, uh, more active and when the brain is relaxed and active then we can learn in a better way so uh, you might have heard about dopamine because dopamine is one of the neurotransmitters it is also called uh, called as happiness hormone you know so it creates a happiness in your body because it secretes from the brain and it creates the happiness mood the happy mood in your body and when your brain is relaxed and happy then you can learn in a better way so it acts as a reward factor and it gives you pleasure it enables emotional response and enables you to see rewards and take action to engage them so when you see that okay after studying uh, this particular uh, book i'm going to understand these two concepts in a better way and if you are eager to learn those concepts then you are eager to learn through the book now this was like very much uh, um, uh, related to intrinsic motivation example but there is also extrinsic motivation example like where uh, you tell a, a small boy that if you finish this work you will get a chocolate then he works for the chocolate and that's how his dopamine is raised when there are low amounts of dopamine students will not pay attention to what you are teaching then serotonin is another hormone or neurotransmitter it affects a person's emotion and mood so it is uh, to keep your mood in a in a better condition uh, the uh, the serotonin needs to be secreted we i am also going to tell you how you can do it but first let's see uh, what are the neurotransmitters next slide please then there is noradrenaline uh, which gets your heart rate and blood pressure up so when especially when you are in in a, any sports for example then uh, it creates excitement and it is very important for the formation of memories and it 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 forms kind of muscle memory actually or uh, what you can say uh, when you learn or to uh, um, when you learn uh, how to uh, go with a bicycle how to drive a bicycle then you use this muscle memory it goes into your muscle memory and then you don't forget it e even if you don't ride the bike you know for 2 years 
but then you get it on one fine day and then you ride it again then you can still do it because it is in your in in your muscle memory and it went into your muscle memory because there was this noradrenaline uh, there and it got you your heart rate and blood pressure up and it created the excitement then the last one is the oxytocin so it's for creating the long lasting emotional bonding so this is uh, typically important when we talk about the teacher student bonding the friend friendship that the students have among themselves so this oxytocin uh, it comes out or it oozes when there is a emotional bonding now we go to next slide so how we can use these neurotransmitters for learning so to really uh, to raise the dopamine levels stress relief is required so we need to calm down the students uh, we can do it through meditation now if you are a student yourself then consider it for uh, your own use that when you want to do something um, uh, some important work or assignment or if you want to read something or study something the first important thing is be relaxed and for that you can have uh, you can use uh, meditation or any other calming down techniques uh, it is uh, also we can have this kind of ice breaking sessions to raise the interest and body movement in between the lesson so for example in finland what we do is that uh, there, there was a thing called surprise jump that we had here so the teacher told to the students to her students that whenever you feel bored just jump at your seat so they started and then they have to shout surprise jump and then everybody will jump with them so this is something to make the keep the students alert and give them some kind of brain break so, uh, then next slide please for other neurotransmitters we can use the collaborative learning methods uh, where there is more group work so uh, the students are not uh, doing individual uh, projects but they are doing group projects and not at home but within the school time in the classroom now if in this kind of lockdown conditions uh, i understand that most of you are at home but still you can collaborate together that's what we are doing right now okay that we all are collaborating together i am talking to you and you can also talk to me now because of uh, uh, the things that we don't want any disturbances in between that's why you all are on mute but there is a possibility that you can uh, we can do it together yes and uh, then we can uh, have different kinds of games uh, small competitions uh, i have uh, here that uh, prantani and uh, he i guess is saying that solving a puzzle or problem induces a feeling of achievement among individuals can we employ such methods to improve the emotional state of a student and induce excitement to learn exactly so that's what i am referring to so small competitions it is uh, it is uh, important to uh, get more serotonin that you want to have this kind of competitions where the serotonin is secreted A little risk taking is also advisable to raise your level of uh, noradrenaline so such so small competitions or small race like for example 100 meter race or any other kind of competition that you can uh, have in within the classroom like for example we play a, a game called bingo here which uh, i think uh, in india also we play that game so it's like you can use these kind of games as a learning tool uh it is uh, uh it is possible okay then uh, i already talked about working in teams or groups and creating stories together uh, it's especially important for the long term memory so if you create the stories together about the learning it is not like general stories but about the learning so for example you are talking about some chemical reaction like how the water is formed so the story of water formation so then you can uh, say that there there was one character named hydrogen and then it was going around and then he met another 
person called oxygen and then they got married something like that you can make a story there is no no boundaries for that uh yeah i got one question do you think surprise jump can be adopted in india no no i am just giving you some example now it's up to you what do you think is good for your situation so whatever examples i am doing it is not so that you need to uh, took those examples only so there can be some other uh, other possibilities some other kinds of activities you can do maybe you can have some activities like clapping together that is not going to disrupt the discipline so it is i am just giving you some examples you can think of your own examples i know you all are capable of uh, thinking your own own strategies and thinking your about your own plans so this is just like something i uh, want to share but otherwise what happens if i just say that okay i will not share anything from finland then it is also become a little bit unnatural uh but i would also like to tell you that we have worked a lot in india and with government school uh, teachers also private school teachers also so we discuss about various examples real time there because now we are on this skype uh, platform and we can't really share uh, a lot here so i might not uh, uh, be able to discuss with you all uh, about it uh but i will just give you some examples for your reference you can decide which things you want to use and how we uh, how you will use uh, those things yeah next yeah so i'm sure you might be knowing this person <laughs> sir ken robinson and uh, his uh, ted talk is pretty famous that who school cre kill creativity and so he says that creativity is now as important as literacy in education so this is his metaphor next slide of creativity so i would like to know what is your metaphor of creativity according to you creativity is so kindly type what do you think creativity is and then write your your own uh, words like what do you think creativity is so i give you 3 minutes to think and type and your time starts now ओके नीलान्य नीला एनी और व्हाट हाउ टू रीड आई डोंट नो बट समथिंग रिबेलियस विद अ सेंस ऑफ यूनिकनेस क्रिएटिविटी हर्षिता सेस क्रिएटिविटी इज थिंकिंग बियॉन्ड द लिमिट्स मे बी व्हाई मे बी इट इज थिंकिंग बियॉन्ड द लिमिट्स यस क्रिएटिविटी इज अ creation imagination the imagination which he or she does without the help of anybody's help okay vishnu priya creativity is something natural to everyone but at the same time unique to each one okay siddhi coming up with new unique ideas with help of imagination okay g lily and unique perspective okay person is creative shilpa creativity is developing new knowledge on experiences it is developed with doing or practicing again and again with new development okay manava creativity is expressing ourselves asmita something that helps you think out of the box existing ideas being adopted adapted to our context could also be creativity yes of course 
means jo we creativity is the ability to deviate from the norm the ability to think and interpret what's been the usual in another light and a habit of thinking outside the box is what i consider creativity to be perfect very nice so hum pulkarni it's something other than conventional okay nice Okay, Subrajuti, creativity is an art of expressing ideas and emotions in one's own unique ways. Great, Mayur, creativity is your dreams, not while sleeping, but while awake. Nice. Pranthanil is typing still, so we'll read that. Will be our last one, I guess, and then we will move forward. connect constructive activity using one's own ideas which increases the constructive knowledge of an individual and at the same time results in the development of the mental state great nice thanks for responding so well so this is all now uh, i think you all must have uh, read these expressions what everybody is saying about different their their ideas about creativity so see what a nice collection we now have about what creativity is but there are uh, many misconceptions in in the common man's world so we'll just quickly have a look at those misconceptions uh, in the next slide so what are these misconceptions so uh, when i discuss with the teachers uh, some of the times they tell that maybe creativity is you know it's like a chaos we just don't know how to pick up things from i know what what is what is creativity what is not creativity sometimes uh, uh, people think that free play is creativity it's like you uh, give the children all the freedom and give them the uh material and then let them do what whatever they want but is it creativity we need to think about it because there has to be some rules even if you want to have some creative activity because if there are some certain rules are there then you can be more productive because then you know the framework that i have to work within this frame and i will find my answers or i will create whatever i want to for example your teacher tells uh, uh, gives you 24 colors and ask you to you know make something out of that that is uh, that is a kind of a free play but maybe a teacher tells you that i want you to take as many shades of blue as possible and make something out of it then it might be something meaningful or something uh, you know more creative you might need to think about it uh, like what kind of shades you can use and how you are going to paint it or draw it so then the the collective rule setting has to be there and then you can be more creative the creativity is for chosen ones that has been also a misconception that oh i am not creative i i i still meet people who tell me that no no i am not creative because they have assigned creativity to a particular thing maybe drawing or painting or singing or dancing basically to fine arts but we know that creativity exist elsewhere also and everywhere actually so this is uh, another one then creativity is abstract because people really don't know Uh, uh how to define uh, the creativity and they don't know earlier uh, there was no measurement possible because uh, we all are mostly uh, you know governed by the left brain 
so we all need to see the numbers like most of us need to see the numbers quantifying the things so that's why the paper pencil tests are so popular because you can quantify you can tell me that okay i got 60 out of 100 i got 80 out of 100 i got 90 out of 100 and then we can you know categorize or label our students that okay those who are above 90 are the uh, intelligent super intelligent then those who are uh, between 70 to 90 they are above average those between 50 to 70 are average something like that we can categorize people so that's why we think that creativity we can't really measure it in this way so that's why we think that it is abstract but it's also for us we can actually measure the creativity if we want but of course there is no need to measure it creativity is something extra curricular so uh, when i started my research in the field of creative creativity especially creativity in education i got these questions like do we really need creativity in education why why do we need it there so this kind of questions i i got uh, and it is not needed in everyday life so it is creativity is like you dance on one day you paint on some days you know like that so it is like intermittently required and it is not required every day but let's see what we have about creativity actually uh, next slide so creativity skills so what are these creativity skills so it's like constructively inquisitive so a person needs to be constructively inquisitive by how uh, how you can develop this skill constructively inquisitive by being curious registering patterns and anomalies making use of previous knowledge researching productively and formulating good questions so these are the skills required for to be constructively inquisitive then the next set is being open minded now how you can be open minded so again it is written there that by using lateral thinking using divergent thinking hypothesizing exploring multiple viewpoints being flexible adaptable and functioning well with uncertainty we see that people who are very organized they can't stand any change in the situation so even now during this lockdown periods you must have observed that people who had more creative side they survived through this lockdown period more easily because they were adapting themselves to this new situation they were trying to find out some solution to their problems uh, some of them started enjoying uh, cooking at home some uh, of uh, uh, them start uh, started uh you know uh, having some good uh, hobbies uh some of them said that okay otherwise i don't get time for uh, my garden so now it's a good time for gardening so i will do my gardening also everybody tried to find their own solution those who had some creative aptitude but those who were not having the creative aptitude they had a problem like now what what i should do i'm getting very bored i i i think you all will agree with me okay so uh, please uh, keep on typing your uh, comments and uh, uh, feedback so that i know that what i am talking making sense <laughs> for you so i i suggest that you can just uh, keep on typing uh, that will also give me uh, motivation to talk further yeah next slide <laughs> yeah and uh, uh, then there are uh, other two creative skills uh, thank you lis he says every every word you speak is so important feel like listening thank you thank you very much so able to harness imagination because uh, what happens normally is that we kill the imagination so when before we just killing the creativity as whole we kill two things we kill being uh, curious and then we kill being imaginative so we show the kids everything so that they don't need to imagine at all now because of these cartoons and a lot of uh, abil- uh, lot of uh, learning material available in the market we are just showing them everything we don't give them any room for imagination and that is very very risky so we need to understand that we need to uh, harness their imagination now how it can be done 
is by exploring. So we need to give them the, the uh, opportunity to, to explore things on their own. Synthesizing and refining multiple options, generating and refining ideas and inventing. Here, the generation of ideas only is not important, but refining those ideas. So it's like you need to think that, OK, I want to, let's say, uh, uh, see about how the soil uh, is uh, on this on my part of village. What is the texture of the soil? If I I want to see that and then I I go and I check only at one place. Is it enough? No, I need to again go to near the river, maybe in the farm, maybe near my house and then I can say that OK, this soil there. Are, there are so many types of the soil. And then which is the good one and then maybe if I want to find an instrument to you know actually see what is the texture of the soil then I have already this knowledge I have explored enough and then I can re generate my idea and then I can refine my idea so that's why it is important uh, and of course invention uh, to harness the imagination then you need to be able to identify and solve problems how you can do it again by understanding and defining the problems, crafting and delivering and presenting solutions. So when we when we write a research paper, then we call it, you know, like crafting the research paper. So which means that I have already written whatever I had to say in that paper, but now I need to check whether whatever I have written is, conv is convincing enough for the reader and for that I need to craft my research paper. So this is called crafting. Delivering and presenting the solutions, demonstrating initiative, discipline, persistence and resilience. Most of the times what happens is that a creative person is not so consistent. Then uh, that person may leave the idea in between. He, he or she feels frustrated. And then they leave the idea in between. So it is a very, very crucial that you are consistent in your efforts. So because when you are creative, you got some ideas which might not uh, be acceptable in their format as it is. So you need to work on that. You need to make it viable, useful, meaningful for the society. Then only it is accepted. So for that, you need to be consistent. Then evaluating impact and success of solutions. So again, here you can see that there is this analytical intelligence is working. Identifying and implementing next steps in refinement or development process. OK, here is one uh, an interesting question. How early can uh, Lise is asking? How early can we introduce a child to real life problems for which they need to find solutions? If you could share Finland example, uh, yeah. If if we learn from Finland, actually they introduce the real life. No, I would not say real life problems, but they introduce the real life environment to the child when he or she is like two year old, maybe. Because once they are into the kindergarten, they take them to the nearby forest. They take them to the nearby places where the children can actually see how the environment is, uh, what kind of changes are happening in the environment uh, according to the season changes. So and then they they talk about all these small changes during their morning circle. They discuss about different things and when they go to the primary school, the secondary school, they do it on a more uh, rigorous basis. So for example, in fifth grade, uh, I know one a group in a classroom. Uh, what they did is they wanted to check this principle that in winters, the water near the bottom of the lake is warmer than the outside temperature. As we all know that the water in the bottom has the temperature uh, about plus four degrees Celsius, though there is ice on top of the lake because in Finland all the lakes are frozen in winter. 
but so they they were curious the children were curious to see uh, and to know that where the fish go where the fishes go so then then they did a project uh, they had the measuring instruments they went to the lake uh, they made a hole ice hole uh, there there are instruments to make a ice hole and then they put their instrument in they saw that okay they they could see the some fish movement under the layer of the ice and then they confirmed that okay whatever they written in the book is true so this is a very good example that how you can harness their imagination yeah. harness their curiosity so this is this is really uh, uh, like that yeah uh, uh, another question from pranthil is creativity always about invention assume that someone has an idea but unfortunately the idea has already been well researched before then will the idea be considered creative okay now this uh, leads us to our next slide let's go next slide please so what is creativity so creativity is the ability to think and skill that can be acquired to produce original product or idea and to find a new connection in two totally different ideas which has never been thought before so your question is that is creativity always about invention so no it can be also an idea so it is not all, always about the product or invention assume that someone has an idea but unfortunately the idea has already been well researched before in that case that 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 is the creativity for that person the originality of idea is for that person star who was a, a creativity researcher he has mentioned this point in 1991 that may be a child who finds about uh you know making a, some kind of a lego or may, or uh, maybe even find how to read for himself or how to draw or find something else which is creative for himself or which is original to himself so that is creativity for that child at that moment but if you want to be known as a creative person then you need to find ideas which are useful for other people as well okay so it is also like connecting dots so i maybe i am good at languages and i am good at sports so my creativity as a teacher can be that i am teaching languages using sports so that is creativity for me so understood this is kind of a difference in that uh, yeah so lise even in already existing products we could make minor additions bringing new uses exactly that's what we do the degree of the creativity is uh, is different like the degree of expression may vary which leads to next slide <laughs> big c and little c so this these are some very basic concepts of creativity so uh, this was introduced by mihai chichenk mihai and howard gardner and uh, they uh, they told us that uh, the degree of expression varies for different people about the creativity so what is big c big c is for the artists they want to create something on a big level or for scientist who are regularly dealing with something new they are producing something new so they these people need this big c now what is little c so little c is that creativity uh, that we all have okay we all have some of our own creativity we all are good at something and that is that is our creativity that maybe we are a uh, good in problem solving related to uh, let's say some plumbing problems at at our house and we are good at that maybe i am good at solving those kind of problems maybe my sister is good at uh, some some cooking uh, recipes or garnishing the dishes whatever kind of or some of us is very good at organizing the cupboard so these all these small small things are called as little c let's go to the next so what is the me meaning of creativity in routine things so we express our creative ideas to do the daily work 
for example studies or doing domestic work i already gave you give you the examples the important thing is applying new ideas to routine things to make it more enjoyable more interactive and successful Uh, it is also to apply the creativity to routine things to open the environment and the minds of people so what a teacher supposed to do or what a leader supposed to do is to open the minds of the people so maybe uh, we can uh, that's what like we did in the beginning uh, we played a small kind of activity some kind of game in between i asked you to write your metaphor of for, uh, for creativity so this kind of some things which make the routine thing enjoyable in other words i would like to emphasize that creativity in routine things is an important attribute so uh, again this chitchink mihai what he said is that little c is the creativity that is a part of all human beings in their daily interactions so i always encourage uh, the teachers with whom i discuss that please go back to your school go back to your classroom and ask your students that where they use their little c because it is very important for them to know that they have this little creativity in them so that they can take risk uh, they are uh, you know uh, they uh, have a very high self esteem they have a positive self image uh, for themselves so that's why it is it is good that they know that what they have okay that's why i also uh, did this activity with you for you know drawing your own symbol because that helps you in forming your self image next slide please so now again a small exercise we will do what are your examples of little c so as you can read the instructions here think about where do you apply this kind of little c in your life write these ideas down on the sticky notes because we normally do it in the face to face session but you can write it in your notebook right now and uh, uh, forget about this one idea per sticky note but you can just write down in your notebook or if you want you can directly type it here in the chat window so that i can also read it and then i give you uh, time again 3 minutes time for this so that you can think and write in your notebook and your time starts now i'll just go and get my water break <laughs>
maybe the last one minute. Okay, now I can see some answers appearing here. Okay, now I will start reading the answers that I got here. Uh, Lee says to recycle waste, I recollect making pen stands out of the toothpaste cartons. Nice. Managing class, uh, G. Lily, managing class when it is indisciplined. Very good. Jovi, I apply my little C with the lessons I read for my course. I do not take notes with a pen or paper, but save what needs to be remembered in the form of file names. Interesting using the least words as possible and mostly rely in code words and acronyms to simplify and remember concepts. Very good. This has saved me time and paper too. Great. Manwa, getting my baby to eat. <laughs> yes, that's a difficult job, I know. Three people are typing. Okay, I'll wait for them. to bridge emotional connection, okay? Okay, great. Uh, now I would just uh, uh, now let's let's uh, go maybe to the next slide, but still people are, are typing. Um, but we can just start discussing about how we can cultivate this latency. So it's like using your daily environment as a source of inspiration. So for example, if you are uh, walking through a road uh, maybe every day, and then you can see that how the uh, the trees are changing, you know, according to the season and you have to really notice it and you have to observe it. So you get your inspiration from that or even any other thing. Maybe it's, it was just a simple example. So I gave you that and it is good to maintain a diary for writing creative ideas. Now there can be different form of diaries. I would not say that you have to always write in a, a paper diary, but now we have many options like this Google Keep, uh, then notes on our uh, mobile. We can record uh, the messages uh, like sound with the sound recorder. So there are so many uh, things are available to, you know, uh, get this data in and to save these ideas. So please make use of all these things. If you are a teacher and you are listening to me right now, then I suggest that you use it for your students that you you can encourage them to maintain such a diary. I, I call it as you know seed bank. <laughs> so where, where I put all my seeds of my ideas 
and uh, then then i can again uh, like i can often go back to this bank and then take some seeds if i need those so it is a uh, it is a very um, a simple thing but very effective to maintain this kind of diary uh, thinking deep and making meaning from superficiality to granularity uh, there is one life coach uh called uh, robin sharma and he talks about this concept that um, uh, we always you know most of the times we think superficially but we should go towards more granularity like we should go more deep into what we are thinking because otherwise we keep on getting ideas but we don't follow one single idea deeply and normally when you get an idea and when you follow it deeply then it leads to innovation so that's why it is important asking open ended questions to yourself that why i am interested in this particular phenomena what am i going to get out of it what uh, what will what is going to be the end result of this thing something like that we can we can have uh, vishnu priya i have a diary of ideas words with sketches lists and some details very good yeah so um, i guess um, you all are uh, maybe tired because you have been attending many sessions today so um, i guess we can uh, stop here uh, today uh, and maybe we can meet again uh, to discuss uh, further points uh, related to this same uh, topic creative pedagogy today i just wanted you to give some basic ideas uh, about like what is creativity and uh, what is big c little c because these concepts are extremely important when we are talking about creativity uh, you know as a pedagogy or a method of teaching and learning so uh, i i really thank you all uh, for joining me and uh, we can discuss these ideas further uh when we meet next time and i would just like to uh, tell you that if you want to write one single note for me single comment that what new concept you have learned today from this session so please uh, write uh, a couple of points that you might have learned today in this session you can just type it uh, there in the chat box i can see that comments are coming up but uh, by the time i uh, would also like to uh, thank you all uh, for participating in this next edithon and i congratulate actually all of you because this is the first step towards you know bringing the creativity in our education system i have been doing my research on uh, creativity uh, in uh, indian education system and finnish education system and uh, Mm, uh, the results are uh, uh, very nice and uh, uh, I, i will definitely share those uh, with all of you when we meet again uh, but it has been a beautiful journey for me to see the different kinds of school environment and different kinds of teachers and their own philosophies so this is really nice now i will read through the comments uh, interesting mm -hmm. session thanks man thanks a lot uh creativity a broader perspective to it very good thank you shubhra jyoti says wonderful session thank you uh please go deeper on our thoughts on education from superficiality to granularity perfect creativity has to be inculcated and grown yes ji lili i can see eight people are typing still so i i will wait little c was interesting for lise thank you Uh, shilpa ke good planning to teach a subject with the new knowledge created with the hobby teacher has yes exactly so connecting uh, two different things manava one clearing the misconceptions about creativity was an um, it went somewhere yeah i 
think I lost the track, but I'll find it again. Clearing the misconceptions about creativity was an important learning for me. Okay, big C, little C concept and how little C can be incorporated. Following an idea through is important. Yes. Vaishnavi man, all the topics you covered I never learned before. It was a wonderful journey with you. Hope we will be able to continue this session. Yes. Uh, Shubhra Jyoti, everyone can be creative and it's not tough to introduce creative education in Indian education, but it needs to be introduced so that people can understand how important. Yes, of course, because Indians are already very creative and we are known for it worldwide. So <laughs> no problem. We just uh, have this kind of uh, new education system where we have neglected this factor, but I think people are uh, slowly understanding the importance of it and we will get back to it. Jovi, thank you, ma'am. The most interesting concept I came across from this session uh, is the surprise jump <laughs> technique. I will use it in my own teaching session this weekend. Great. This is mandatory in e-teaching. Exactly, exactly. That Because this is even mandatory more when you are teaching remotely. So to, you know, keep them motivated and keep them active. Siddhi uh, Mahajan, thank you ma'am for a wonderful session. We learned that we use creativity in so many aspects of life, but we are unaware of it. Exactly, we are unaware of it. Thank you, this session was very resourceful. Welcome, everyone has creativity power. Mayur says care has to be taken only for maintaining it. Exactly, so we need to harness it. Prantanil, what is creativity and what are the common misconceptions related to it? How creative pedagogy helps to increase interest among students for the subject and how creativity is necessary in everyday life? Yes. Great. So thanks a lot, everyone. And uh, thanks a lot, uh, Makeshift and Next Edithon. So uh, we will keep in touch and maybe I will see you again. Uh, but I'll still yes, wait because you said to be a typing, so I'll just wait. Thank you so much for this session. I'm sure everyone learned a lot like they already said. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. And all the best to everyone, uh, those of you who are participating in this edithon and submitting your ideas. Uh, it's a great way to learn, uh, though maybe you succeed or not doesn't matter. But the process is important, as we always say about creativity. <laughs> Great. Yeah, the, the most important thing here is that. Uh, mm, yeah, we can have another session for this that uh, he's saying, uh, ma'am, we would love to hear your thoughts on what elements of Finland model can be introduced in Indian context. I already talked about it when we had the inauguration session, uh, but we can have another session on that. Maybe on this platform, maybe on some other also and Jovi and also the contributions uh, by all the participants shows how creativity is present in all and just needs the right tool to access it. OK, thanks. Thanks all. Maybe I'll take your leave now. Uh, have a nice uh, not evening. Maybe <laughs> uh, it's uh, night already there in India. So good night and uh, see you again. Uh, bye bye. Take care. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you everyone for joining. Bye.